Jesus exalted Name over all High priest of him At the right hand of God I offer up my prayers and praise to you I offer up my prayers and praise to you Jesus exalted Name over one High priest of heaven
In giving your life you gave me mine And we will come and sit at your feet We will bow and we will weep As we think
set, the captain's free. He stands upon the holy mount and shouts to us, Come out, come out, my shield, my defender. You're my life, my Lord. My shield, my defender. You're my life, my Lord. My shield, my defender. You're my life, my Lord. My shield, my defender. You're my life, my Lord. Run to the mountains, to the rocks. Hear the sword sharp word of God. It's crushing like a cataract. We are taking this land back. Stand upon the word of Christ. He's raised us up to give us life. Our chains fall off. He sets us free. We're marching on to victory. Great to have you here with us. Um, we hope you're going to um, enjoy your time with us this morning and that God would bless you. That's what would be great. If you feel like you've met with God when you leave here, then that would be amazing. Later on, we're going to be looking at our purpose in life and, and how do we know what our purpose in life is. So if you're interested in that, then hang in there and we'll have a chat about that a bit later on in the service. There's a couple of things that I wanted to mention this morning. One of them is about um, giving you an opportunity to give if you want to. 
um, if you're in that position and you'd like to give to Clearway's work, which is based around serving our community um, in St Clear and the surrounding villages, then you can hop along to our website and there's ways that you can give there. It might be coming across the screen now. Um, so that's one opportunity. We're, we're working out our purpose at the moment in lots of different ways. Clearway is going to face lots of challenges and changes this year as Martin's going to retire. Um, the trusteeship is going to change because some of the trustees that have been uh, managing this church behind the scenes for blimmin' donkey's years um, are moving on to other things and we wish them well. Um, but we're going to have changes there as well. So there's a lot of working our purpose out going on in Clearway at the moment and we would really love for you to join with us in prayer about that. We would love for you to join in, join with us in prayer privately. Um, we have the opportunity through our prayer WhatsApp app group um, where we can pray for each other on all sorts of things. Um, but if you're interested in that, then again, get in touch with us and we can link you up to that so that we can still be part of the life of the church, even while we're all having to sit in our own rooms. Um, and so that this church can become strong in terms of what we can do to serve others. Um, because that is our vision um, and we want to make that our priority even as we all work out um, our new purposes in God and where we're going. It's always great to be able to um, to be able to tell God how good he is and we're going to have that opportunity now as we join together in song so let's sing together. The Lord's my shepherd, all God's wants. He leads me by in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust and trust and trust in you. And I will trust and trust and trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness. And he anoints my head with love. And my cup is I feast on his pure delights, and I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in him, and I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in him, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and though I walk the darkest paths, I will not fear the I will trust, I trust, I will trust in you, and I will trust, I trust, I trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will be. Found in your grace, totally surrendered to your embrace, and there's nothing more than you. See 
your perfection and lost in your peace your faithfulness sings over me and your love is the light of my soul and i lift my eyes to you creator of the world and i stand in awe of you of your glory and i live to worship you son of god king of heaven Saved by your mercy, found in your grace, totally surrendered to your embrace, and there's nothing more than you. See your perfection, and lost in your peace, your faithfulness sings over me, and your love is the light of my soul and I lift my eyes to you creator of the world and I stand in awe of you of your glory and I live to worship you son of God king of heaven and the angels I as holy to the one who is to come, hear us sing hallelujah, hallelujah. in John's epistle 1 John chapter 3 and the first verse behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God 
exclamation mark it has in my Bible. And this next song emphasizes that to us, that we are called through Jesus Christ, we are called his children, and we can call him Abba, Father, our loving Father. Let's sing together. Each new day I lift my eyes up to you, Lord, I know my life belongs to you, my very breath and every heartbeat are granted from your hand. All around I hear love's greatest story spoken forth. In all creation's glory, maker of the heaven and earth, I stand in awe of you. How great is the love you lavish on us, calling us your own. So great is your love that we should be called children of the living God. And that is what we are. What a joy to live my life for you, to walk the paths that you have called me to. In every trial, you always will be my all-sufficient one. All around, I hear love's greatest story spoken forth in all creation's glory. Maker of the heaven and earth, I stand in awe of you. How great is the love you lavish on us calling us your own. So great is your love that we should be called children of the living God. How great is the love you lavish on us, calling us your own. So great is your love that we should be called children of the living God. And that is what we are. And that is what we are. Children of the living God. Sons and heirs of your kingdom. We your children your sons and daughters, the children of the living God. Papa, Father, we love you, Lord. Good morning. Last week, we heard that Captain Tom had died. Not only did he raise a phenomenal amount for the NHS, but also he inspired other physically restricted people to attempt their own challenges. Unfortunately, although they achieved so much, they may not be so well remembered by most of us. But to God, what they have done is equally valuable. In the same way, whether we have been followers of his most of our lives or have only come to faith in our latter years, we will all be on the same level when we join him in heaven. So let us pray. Thank you, Father God, that you promise to all who believe and follow you that we will share in your glorious kingdom 
after this life on earth has finished. That Jesus Christ lived, died and rose again for each one of us. No matter how long or short a time we have been in your family. We praise you for your faithfulness, for your acceptance of all we have to offer. Lord, we know that we don't have to measure up to other people who appear to do more or be more gifted than us. For we have all been given different gifts and roles in your service. Help us when we feel envious or inadequate in how we live our lives for you. May we remember that you created us, each for our own purpose in your world, that you know us right from the start of life, that you have a plan for me and each one of us your children. Sometimes, Father, we get distracted by other ideas or lazy in our commitment to your guiding and we are truly sorry. Help us each day to recommit to you, to heed your call, so that we may be more effective in our work for you. Teach us to focus on you and not to try and be somebody else, but to be the person you have created us to be. Like a jigsaw, Lord, we can all fit together to become a beautiful picture in your hands. So as we start a new week, may we be ready to do what you ask of us. May we be alert to your guiding hand and may we serve you and love you forever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So today we're going to look at another parable that Jesus told. Um, and it's a parable that always gets my back up to start off with. I read it and I think, well, on the surface of things, things don't look particularly um, pleasant in this parable. And um, and then I start to read it and I start to actually think about it as I've had to do to think about this talk. And it does, like everything else, normally make some sense. <laughs> so we'll tell the story first. And the story is told, Jesus tells this story of um, workers who were waiting to be hired in the marketplace. So um, what would happen is that if you were out of work, if you didn't have a regular job, that you could go to. Um, you would go to the marketplace every morning and you would literally stand around um, like goods on sale, like apples on a, you know, on a vegetable barrow. Um, and you would hope that somebody would come along and give you employment for that day. And, um, and so in this story, there's, there's all these workers that are in the marketplace, they're waiting to be hired and along comes a landowner. And this is really early in the morning, first thing in the morning. This landowner comes along and he selects some of the people that uh, have put themselves out as available for hire and um, he says to them, right, I'm going to pay you a denarius for a day's work. And a denarius was roughly, um, you know, the standard day rate for a labourer. So anyway, they're delighted and off they go to go and work in this landowner's vineyard. Um, and then... The weird thing that happens is that about nine o'clock in the morning, so a few hours later, the landowner comes back and there's some people still standing around who haven't been hired, um, who haven't been lucky and, and got employment that day. And he goes up to them and he says, you know, come and work in my vineyard for the, for the rest of the day, what remains of the day, and I'll pay you what, what I would consider to be um, a fair rate. So they go off. And this landowner keeps coming back. He comes back at 12 o'clock and he comes back at three in the afternoon and he even comes back at five when, you know, the day's work is nearly done. 
and he says to the people who are standing around doing nothing he says right come with me um, and come and work in the vineyard so by the end of the day he's got all these people working in the vineyard who have rocked up at different times of the day and, and it comes time to pay their wages and as the wages are being paid what's noticed is that the people that have worked all day long have got their denarius like like the landowner said to them to start off with but the people that have not shown up until three in the afternoon or five in the afternoon also get paid a denarius and the people that have worked all day one of them comes up to the landowner and says this doesn't seem fair this you know we've worked through the heat of the day we've been here all day knocking our socks off for you and we got a denarius and yet the guys that you didn't hire until five o'clock in the afternoon have also got a denarius and that doesn't seem fair to to me and that doesn't seem fair to me either when i read this story it doesn't seem fair because we are really tied up with what is fair and what is not aren't we a couple of days ago i was out in my garden and i was chatting to my neighbor over the fence and it was freezing like it is today it's been freezing up here so um she's got a woolly hat on and she looks lovely in her woolly hat it really suits her and she's got her hair down and it's just like the adverts and the people that you see and she looks absolutely gorgeous in her woolly hat and i am also standing there in my woolly hat doing an impression of a garden gnome thinking this doesn't this isn't fair this is not fair how come my neighbor looks lovely in her woolly hat and i look like something that should be round a pond with a fishing rod in its hands or you know we're doing some homeschooling as a lot of you will be at the moment and and one child is fine and when there's two children you tend to spend most of your time dealing with arguments because things aren't fair or because the boys don't think things are fair and there's this inherent sense within us that we want things to be fair and then Jesus rocks up with this story and it doesn't seem fair to us and we're wondering what Jesus is playing at here. We're wondering where God is coming from because it doesn't seem fair. So before we even get into the guts of this story, we have to understand that God never promised that it would be fair. God never said this life would be fair. God never said that, you know, equality of opportunity or anything would actually come to be, although he's really keen that we work for that. He never promises that life will be fair. He doesn't actually say if you're a good person, only good things will happen. Um, that's just not it's just not something that rocks up in the Bible. So it shouldn't shock us that we get this story that seems to be on the face of it really unfair. What God does promise is that he wants as many people as possible to have the chance to live their best life. And in Jesus's economy, their best life is a life spent very close to Jesus and walking Jesus's way. And that's what God promises. He doesn't say life will be fair, but he promises everybody the same chance. So let's unpack this story a little bit um, and to, to look at it, first of all, or for, for most of it, really, I want us to look at it through the mindset of the people that had had to put themselves up for hire in the marketplace. So you imagine what that's going to feel like. Imagine what that's going to look like for you. And, and the first thing that struck me was, my goodness, 2000 years we've moved on since Jesus told this story. And there's not a whole pile that's changed because there are still people. We all know there are people in our society today, in our wealthy Western society, who have to subsist on zero hours contracts and who rock up for make themselves available every single day um, for work that might not come. And so things haven't changed very much. But there's these guys and they're on these kind of zero hours contracts and they're standing in the marketplace and they're wondering if they're going to be hired. And they're probably trying to make themselves look strong and healthy and intelligent, even if they haven't been blessed with good health. Um, they're probably trying to make themselves look as good as they possibly can so that they stand a chance of being hired. Because what's going to happen if they're not, if they're not hired, 
there's no welfare state there's no anything to support them they've probably got families at home who are waiting to see whether they're going to have dinner tonight they'll have rent to pay they'll have all of the normal things that we need money for and these men probably are standing there hoping that they're going to be able to do the things that that they want to do provide for their families look after themselves um, have some sense of self-worth so imagine if you're hired if you are one of the people that is hired um, you are going to be in a really good position because you're going to have that sense of achievement you're going to have that sense of self-worth you're going to feel like you're doing what you were destined to do you're going to have some purpose for that day and if you're not hired if you're one of the people that isn't hired imagine the disappointment imagine the the position that you've got to walk back to your family now saying well we probably haven't got anything for tea tonight because i haven't been able to get work and you're going to struggle for a sense of purpose because the thing is it's interesting every time the landowner goes back in the story every time he goes back to the marketplace he finds people standing around doing nothing because they've got nothing to do and we all need something to do do you remember probably you know getting on for a year ago now um, when we find when we suddenly found ourselves in our homes and we were maybe furloughed and we were maybe not working as we normally would but there was stuff to do because for ages you have that list of stuff that you've always wanted to get done um, and never had a chance to and then you gradually work your way through that and you get to the stage where you wake up in the morning and the only thing you've got to do is maybe watch another Netflix box set and it's hard to find a sense of purpose it's hard to find a sense of achievement and that is because we were all designed to achieve even back in the garden of eden adam and eve were told to tend the garden they had a job to do and that job gave them purpose so here's my first question today here's the first question that i think that jesus would ask us through this parable and it is what is your purpose in life what is your purpose in life because everyone needs a purpose in life and then the second thing that we can maybe learn from this story and maybe we have to infer it a little bit um, but when the landowner came into the marketplace to to um, select people for hire it might not all have been his decision because there is a definite indication that there's some negotiation that goes on so there's a definite negotiation around what the rate of pay is going to be and he's going to offer a denarius and it could well have been that some of those people that weren't hired first actually turned down the offer of the denarius because they were waiting for something better to come along and that could well have happened um, even when the landowner comes back the actual rate of pay isn't mentioned but there is it says things like they agreed to work for whatever so there was a discussion that went on and maybe some of those people were waiting to see if there was anything better coming along and again for our own sense of uh, self-worth for our own mental health we always hope that there's going to be something better coming along you know people wouldn't go out and buy the the latest sofa it's a silly example but you know you, you you hope that when when your old car gets knackered that you'll be able to get something that's a little bit better or be able to get the next promotion or be able to and we're constantly looking for what's coming along down the tracks that's better than I've already got, than I've already experienced. And again, for our mental health, I think we really do need to be able to have an answer to those two questions. And into this story comes Jesus, disguised as a landowner, offering a denarius. And what he's offering is everything that you could possibly need. 
You see, even in this story, a labourer could comfortably and easily um, feed himself, clothe himself, have a roof over his head, look after his family on a denarius a day. And into this story, Jesus, disguised as a landowner, comes along offering everything that anyone could possibly need. And so I wonder what would Jesus's answer to these two questions that I've raised be? The first one, what is your purpose in life? I'll tell you what your purpose in life is. Your purpose in life is to walk with Jesus into his vineyard and work with him there. Because when we take up Jesus's offer of going with him into his vineyard, into the world, um, the vineyard is always the, the, the picture of the world. Um, when we take up Jesus's offer to walk with him into the world, we know that we are going to have everything that we need. And not only for this life, but for the life to come. That denarius represents our security right on into eternity. And Jesus designed us to have that purpose in life. And so any other purpose that we try and create for ourselves is only going to be sometimes quite successful. I'm not saying that it's not, but it's only going to be a pale imitation of the purpose that Jesus has for you in your life right now. Because when you walk with Jesus into his vineyard, you are in the right place. You've come home you're secure, you're safe, you're warm, you're comforted, you're loved, you're all of those things that we try to strive for on our own and yet what we need to do is just accept Jesus's purpose for our life. And the second thing, or just no, just go back to that purpose a minute, if if you've already accepted Jesus and if you are already walking the Christian life, it's a little bit like um, like I was saying in James the other day on a Wednesday about simplifying our life you know because even when we are Christians sometimes life can be really complicated and sometimes we can struggle to work out what our purpose is and sometimes we can struggle with decision making and choices and whether that's things that would be you know labelled as part of the secular society or labeled as part of our spiritual walk and there's no there's no such thing you know it's all in a mush together isn't it as we actually you know walk through our lives with Jesus but if we remember that's our purpose our purpose is to be in Jesus's vineyard with him and to work for him and so if we've got decisions to make or if we've got choices to make, then maybe just to remind ourselves of what our purpose is will help us with making those choices that we have to make. Maybe it will simplify that process a little bit for us. So it's just something to think about if you've already decided to you know, follow Jesus into his vineyard. And then the second thing about this, what, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What's Jesus's answer to that? Because Jesus's answer to that is that, you know what? Nothing better is going to come along. This is the best offer that you can ever be offered. There is no other way in life that is going to give you more security or more peace or more comfort than taking up Jesus's offer. And maybe some of you have been waiting for quite a while to make that decision. And my question to you this morning would be, what are you waiting for? What do you think is going to come along that is going to be better than what Jesus has to offer you now? The good thing, the positive thing is that Jesus doesn't give up. So just as the landowner did in this story, he will come back and back and back and maybe you might this morning I don't know but maybe you might be sitting there thinking well I missed my chance Jesus came knocking on my door a while ago and I decided to wait for something better or even as a Christian I missed my chance I know Jesus was calling me right I know Jesus was calling me to do x y or z a couple of years ago and I I I, 
I was too scared or the time wasn't right or but I know I missed my chance Jesus comes back and offers you that chance again to take him up on his best offer and he will come back as long as there is still work to do in the vineyard but what you have to understand is that eventually the work will be done and then it will be too late and that tied together with the fact that there ain't nothing better coming along down the tracks maybe we'll help you to make your choice and make your mind up sooner rather than later because one day it will be too late and Jesus doesn't want it to be too late and that's why he just bulldozes over our ridiculous thoughts of fairness because he says I don't care about fairness I want everybody to have that chance while it is still day he comes back and he offers us purpose in life and he offers us the chance to live our best lives in his vineyard with him let's not make him have to go away and then come back and knock again huh let's pray Jesus I thank you that my purpose with you is secure that you knew me from the creation of the world so that you know me inside and out and that you still want to be with me even when sometimes I might not even want to be with myself very much and Jesus I pray that you would bring that back to my mind day after day that you would help me to make wise choices that are going to be good for me but that are going to be good for your kingdom and your kingdom's purposes and Lord today I put myself into your hands and I ask you to work out your purpose in me in order that as many people as possible may have the chance to have a glimpse of your vineyard and what life would be like living there with you in Jesus name we pray Amen. Well, I hope the rest of your week goes well. Um, and I pray peace. I pray peace on all of us. And I pray that our minds and our hearts would be aligned in, in finding it easy to, to do the right thing and to make the right choices this week. I pray that God will be with you, that he will be present with you and that he will be close to you. Have a great week and God bless.